like this. Yo, yo, how we doing? All right, <clears throat> present. What's up, Smooth? How you doing? How you doing? Saucy, saucy. <clears throat> saucy, saucy. What's going on, Rodney? How you doing, man? <clears throat> Andre, how you doing? DB, how you doing, man? Salute. Let's get it. Let's get it. Try and get the money. I see you. Oh, Daryl, how you doing, man? Hey, I appreciate that, man. Uh, had a rough day yesterday, man. Today, yesterday was rough. Uh, man, just crazy, man. I missed it. I missed a good trade setup. Trying to do um, a lot of business things. Uh, had business merchant account problems. And then I had um, my fax machine wasn't working. My number wasn't working. Like I was trying to put out fires with that. And man, it was just like, I, I just didn't even have time. I, I didn't even get what I wanted to get accomplished yesterday. Not even just the live, but you know, it was crazy. <clears throat> Kevin Thompson, what up, Jay? So waiting on your call. I know you busy, my dude. Uh, Kevin, we got to do funding for you, right? I got to do funding for like three people today as well. Um, it's getting a lot of different things done. Like, um, yeah, I had some problems with my fax machine. Like, they just got that fixed today. I called them like four times yesterday. I, the phone kept hanging up every time I had on. I got on hold, and the line was switched. It was hanging me up. I had to call back again. You know, I just wait for customer service on the phone. Y'all know how that goes. Um, I have to hope the missus is feeling better. Yeah, she's feeling great. I appreciate that. End of time of the day, it feels like that, man. It really does feel like that. I literally, I literally could not get what I wanted to get done. And plus, having hangups with different people. I was at the bank. There was one teller at the bank. One teller at the bank. I'm trying to get something done at the bank. Couldn't even do it. I mean, I was there for an hour just trying to do one transaction. Um, it was just ridiculous, man. Just time went crazy. Anyway, that's not why you're here. Salute to everybody who's watching right now. You can. Uh, ask a question credit wise. Um, you also can ask a tax question if you'd like. Uh, you want to ask a trading question that's dealing with uh, currency trading. You can ask that question as well. I don't mind that. Uh, if you got a question that you want to ask about, um, you know, a little tax information, I, I throw a couple of bones out there as well. <clears throat> so, uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw somebody had commented on one of my pictures yesterday talking about some money or whatever and that sent my wife some PayPal money or some cash app or something like that. Like, wife doesn't even take any payments. Uh, you know, but the negativity is going to keep coming. Um, it's always from the same person. I don't know why people are kind of trolling right now. Um, don't really care. How young can you add a person as an AU? Um, you can add them now. They can be zero. They got a social security number. You can add them right now. You don't have to wait to add them. You see people back in the day, y'all know black folks. If you're black, uh, if you're not black, probably didn't happen to you. But I know a lot of black folks. This has happened to either you or somebody that you know who is black. Okay. Um, but mom and dad and uncles used to put stuff in your name before you even had words to say. Like you find out later on in life that you had a light bill or something like that that was in your name or credit card that's in your name. <laughs> because of somebody using your social security number to buy something. Um, so if you don't know anybody like that, you need some more black friends. Um, anyway, sorry you had that bad day. Uh, ready for that knowledge. What's going on? How you doing? <laughs> Everything's in your name, the whole house. Facts. Facts. He said, why people did that shit too? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess I need to ask more white people that. That's my fault. See, that's me being closed-minded. Um, how did you get items removed off your credit attached to a bankruptcy from 2018? An increase, not moving. 
uh, need help. Yes, inquiries are not going to move unless you do something special. Now, the inquiry side, I cannot help you on because I do have a proprietary um, knowledge on that. Let me say, uh, can't think of the proper word right now, intellectual property. I have on that to get those removed. So I can't tell you exactly how to do that because that's going to uh, take away from what I already do. Okay. Uh, but your inquiries are not going to move unless uh, you're very adamant about, you know, the process. You got to know the process of how they're added onto your credit. There are all ways to get them off. You can read uh, different things in the FCRA on how you, how you can get them off. You just got to kind of word your letter a proper way in order to do that. But um, I can't give you that information, unfortunately. But as far as on the bankruptcy, you can get the bankruptcy off. You can. There are different ways to do that. Um, we do that here as well here at J Knows Credit as far as removing those things. But um, <clears throat> you know, if you don't, if you don't really, if you're not really into the the, the scope of credit repair, um, a lot of steps that you have to do in order to get a bankruptcy removed the proper way. You know, a lot of steps. And so uh, you can do it over time. You can do it with different letters. But um, the best way to do it is to really just get it taken off your credit altogether. So if you, uh, you know, research any type of credit suite or if you want to just pay for that, that's one of the hardest things to get off your credit is a bankruptcy. Uh, and I think the second hardest is probably the increase, to be honest, or student loans, one of those. So uh, let's see. So I have a question. I'm looking to add two credit cards to my arsenal. What can I do to maximize my credit limit? What is the impact to my credit score? The hard increase. Okay, the impact will be anywhere between three to nine points per inquiry. That just depends on how many you currently have. All right, if you only have like one or two, adding one other one or two other ones will give you about three points, but that's a temporary drop. Um, if you have more, if you have over five, like five to seven, it can go up to like nine points, you know. Um, let me answer that question as far as that first one you had, what to do to maximize your credit limits. If you're applying for a new card or if you're applying for uh, an increase, like right now, I haven't applied for an increase on one of my cards, even though I'm, I'm ready for one, I haven't applied for it yet because I'm going to, uh, waiting for everything to post here for the beginning of the month, as far as the reporting dates for everything to post before I ask for a credit line increase because I want my utilization to be as low as possible. Uh, preferably, you want it to be under 10% across the board. That's where you can maximize it, okay? Um, if you have it up to 30%, I know what the blogs say and all that. Credit Karma says. I know what different forms say. Nerd Wallet says keep it under 30%. You want it under 10% if you want to maximize uh, how much you can get, okay? So don't apply until you have your utilization low. Of course, I mean, this goes without saying, you don't want to have a lot of negatives on your credit. You don't want a lot of negative items on there. But um, if everything else is perfect on your credit, right now you might just have, you know, uh, more inquiries or a higher utilization. I would say lower utilization. And if you have a lot of inquiries, um, you definitely want to try to get those removed first. That's going to bump your score up even more. Uh, you want your score to be in like the 730s at least before you ask for an increase if you want to get the most money. I know that uh, Amex will triple what they've already given you if your score is high enough. Um, like if you have 5,000 already, you want you can get 15,000. That's their maximum, but only if you qualify with having that yo low, low utilization and no other negative items. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the best way to do it. <clears throat> All right. Um, oh, before I go into any more questions, just to let you know, um, there are, like I said, there are a lot of things that I'm doing right now to make sure that all of my clients are taken care of. I am doing a lot of uh, different organization tools that we getting in place. That way we don't um, have any hiccups or miss anybody's file and things like that. Um, those things do happen where we might miss a file. Um, so we're trying to make sure that we can nip that in the butt to where nobody's foul gets lost because in busy times, of course, um, there are things, you know, typing errors, typing errors happen to where things are feel like that person's already been sent off and they haven't. So we're getting things in place to make sure that we don't have anybody fall by the wayside. So 
um, as well as um, getting things that, um, you know, just make the business more, um, you know, more legitimate, let me say. Um, so it won't just be just videos. It'll be, you know, you'll see different artwork. You'll see different um, clothing. Um, like I said, the website is still, I supposed to have a website done last week. Um, but man, um, I'm building it myself. I don't have anybody building it for me. Uh, there's a reason for that because a lot of times, you know, you have people who are supposed to do something for you and they don't deliver on that. And so, <clears throat> you know, I'm trying to do a lot of things myself right now, as well as, of course, have my assistant do certain things I need her to do. But in this case, with the, with the website, I am building that myself. So please be, be patient on that as I get that fully launched as far as my new site. OK, um, as well as Super Chat, if you want to do a Super Chat donation, you definitely can do that. Just want to make sure I put that out there. There will be new hoodies coming out. There will be hoodies like this that are sleeveless. OK, so people say they can't wear hoodies in the uh, summertime. I do it all the time. Uh, if you look at uh, anybody who's here, um, you know, in America who may have... Um, they may have, um, you know, different de different descent. They might be from India or even from Africa, and like my wife is from Africa, and so they might have things that they wear around their heads. You know, you've seen the head wraps and all that. What that does is that actually helps block the sun, because keep in mind, yes, we are black, but yes, we can also die from um, exhaustion and heat stroke and all that kind of stuff as well when the sun is beaming on you directly. And so having blockage from that heat is very, very important. You don't want it to be directly beaming on you. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, can you wear hoodies in the summer or the winter? I do it all the time. I just wear sleeveless hoodies. Okay. Um, you can wear hoodies <laughs> or any other clothing um, that is still covering all parts of your body that are full, fully sleeved and you can still be full of energy and still be, um, you know, not sweat as much people think you're going to sweat um, with, you know, wearing that kind of stuff. So people don't don't really understand that you can also wear other articles of clothing when it's hot. OK, it's been done before. It's been repeated. I don't know why this is something special for people to think that, oh, man, you wear a hoodie in the in the summertime man, you crazy. Like, bro, like you, you don't know what hot is yet. You need to go to Africa or India and, you know, see some real hot. Um, and you understand why you need to wear more clothing when it's hot like that. And so I'm one of the most least, <laughs> least perspirating per people that I know of. Like <laughs> people know that I don't really sweat a whole lot and I wear hoodies all the time. So anyway, pause for the cause there. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Due to your. Oh, wow. Sorry, I just got an email from a client. Fantastic. Got email about a personal loan. Okay. So anyway, I will be doing uh, checking lines of credit. Uh, I will be doing uh, business lines of credit. Those are coming. I haven't got about March Madness. I know it's already March. I know we haven't really poured into more of the business things. Like I said, uh, that was what I was planning on doing come March the 1st. But there's been so many people who've needed help with their personal credit. I'm just getting, you know, getting started, just really just getting started with everything. So uh, there'll be a lot of things that'll be done to where I'm able to put more time into helping everybody with their business credit and helping them build that up. Um, so everybody still be patient with that. Just trying to be 100 percent real that that process is coming. Jay, what do you charge to remove inquiries? I charge fifty dollars per inquiry, fifty dollars is the standard that I charge per inquiry. Sometimes I have discounts, sometimes I don't. And so uh, right now it is $50 per inquiry. Uh, if you want to get the unlimited inquiry service, it is $700 for that. Oh, I think I might have it at $725, I think, to be uh, make sure I'm exact. Because you'd be like, well, Jay told me $700. OK, make sure I have my uh, my prices up here correctly. Let's see, 725 is what I have it at. 725 is for the unlimited inquiry service removal. So that means if you're going for funding, we can start from today and you can go for the next three months and go hand with your inquiries. And no matter how many inquiries you get, it'll be $725 to get those removed. 
Okay. Let's see. I think I just got a merchant approval from a new merchant. We'll see what that goes as well. But um, yeah, so let's get to your questions here as well. Well, first, let me go ahead and address address what I want to talk about uh, in this video as far as uh, credit profiles. Okay. So a lot of people hit me up and they're like, yeah, Jay, I want to get funding. I want a loan. I want credit cards. And they're not ready. And so I kind of hate to be the bearer of bad news for people, but um, I'm not trying to just take your money. If I was trying to take your money, I would just say, hey, uh, send me that 2000 that 3000 that whatever you want to send me. Um, and let's, um, let me just take it and run off on the plug on you, for lack of a better word. But I don't do that. I don't want you to go and spend your money on something. And I know it's not going to give you any value. That's why if you call me and say, what do you think about some AU trade line? Should I get some? I'm going to suggest to you no, but you're grown. You can do what you want. Okay. Now I can't make you do that, but I'm going to tell you what's going to better help you, whether you get it from me or somebody else. Um, a lot of people won't do that. They're always going to just suggest what they do. I don't do that. I'll tell you what's going to be best for you. Uh, whether I have that service or not, I'm going to tell you that that's what you need to get done. Like if you have a problem with check systems before I had to send you elsewhere, I, I mean, you have to ask somebody else about that because I wouldn't know um, what to do with it. OK, I definitely need this video because I'm ready to uh, rake the scissors to my cards and say F credit. <laughs> and I spoke to you yesterday. You're right about not just taking people's money. How can I get in contact with you? Um, so here is my number. I'm going to address a couple things here. Like I said, please be patient. I'm going to make sure I go over enough things. I know I missed a day, so I'm trying to catch up with everything. Okay. There's my number. Hope you can see that right there. Uh, those credit cards that you suggested for bad credit, my score is 575. Should I apply for them? It doesn't matter what your score is. You're going to get approved. Your score doesn't matter where you are, Rodney. They're going to automatically approve you. You're paying the programs to be able to do that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bill French, will I be able to speak to you directly? Speak to me directly is $150. Talk to me directly. If you want to ask me questions, it's $150. You can definitely talk to me directly if you'd like. You're just paying for my time. By people who call, um, they don't understand the... Um, you know, the value of time. And so they call me and tell me about their whole life story, about the kids, about their family, about who died, about who didn't die, about, you know, what they're doing, about how they got in credit trouble, about uh, the birds and the bees and the songs and the trees and their cell phone, and how their cell phone broke and how their husband lost their job, wife lost their job and how, you know, um, and then, you know, it's going to be rude of me to hang the phone up on you because, you know, you're going to be like, man, he's not very professional. He hung the phone up. But because my, my time is not valued, I have to charge an amount of money for my time. And people will take my time seriously. If not, then, um, you know, you talk to my assistant. My assistant, you can call that number, ask my assistant questions all you want, and it'll cost you nothing to ask her questions. Now, if you want a actual uh, evaluation of your credit, it costs twenty five dollars to go through her to do what I'm going to tell you the same thing to do. Just that you're not wasting my time on the phone when I can be doing other things. Like right now, I have to go to the post office. I just sent the fax, which I'll show you right now because my fax machine wasn't working. I told you I'm not even trying to blow smoke up anybody's butt. So uh, here, let's see. You see my fax machine is on the floor, okay? And I have this big old long extension cord coming over here to the wall and all the way over here to my freaking box. Look at this. Look, look at this. Look at this. I got my thing. Look at, that, look at that. I got that thing going all the way up into my closet. Just trying to get my dang on fax machine to work so I can send off faxes today. Then I got to go to the mailbox once I get off this live. And I got to go send the physical letters into the credit bureaus as well. Because I like to fax it and mail things off at the same time. That way I know for a fact nothing gets lost. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> you know, like I said, a lot of people call and waste my time as well as I have my iPad over here. Have another computer over here, another MacBook. So I try to do different things with different different computers. I'm trading over here. Um, I ate 
four bites of macaroni and cheese and one banana and a cup of coffee. That's what I had today already. Um, <laughs> as well as doing other things and calls and like it's trying to get merchant accounts approved. Um, just, I mean, just, just ridiculous, just ridiculous amounts of thing that I have to do. Not, and, and this is since I woke up this morning. It's not like this stuff has just happened. You know what I'm saying? And I'm finished up my taxes. Um, <laughs> trying to finish up my taxes as well. But yeah, it's a lot of work that goes into running a business and running several businesses. So you're just paying for my time. It's not trying to be funny. not trying to say that, you know, your money is worthless or, you know, your opinions are worthless. It's not, it's not what it is, you know? Um, but I am the owner of my company. So I gotta, I gotta do the work, man. I gotta put in the work. So that way, cause the most important thing, like I said to anybody watching is, your credit being fixed. If you paid me money, you want your credit fixed. You could give a crap about this video. To be all in all honesty, you're like, yo, bro, uh, less talking on videos, more sending my files off so I get my credit fixed, bro. That's all I care about. You got my bread, fix my credit. That's just everything real. So that's why I have to make sure that the hanging on to every phone call and checking everybody's reports myself, I can have more time to actually do the work I need to do. Um, that's the most important to the clients is, you know, delivering all my services. That's the most important thing. And so, um, <laughs> and, and like I said, I, you know, and you spend money on what you feel is valuable. You know, if you feel like, you know, I need to talk to him directly, I can talk to him directly. Now, as far as tax consulting and all that, you're going to go into like a 300, $500, you know, consultation fee. You know, so <clears throat> just depends on what you need. Um, let me address. Um, <laughs> so this is one thing I, I have to address. OK, so now this is the date. This is the date. Uh, let me see. Paid, paid. I got to pay that Home Depot card today. I have stuff in my calendar. See, I got to pay. Uh, can you see that? I got to pay uh, my Home Depot credit card today, too. All right. So. Today is the 12th. Today is the 12th, right? Today is the 12th. The 15th is coming up. So people who actually put a down payment, um, which I don't normally do, and uh, put a down payment on the 27th or 28th for your services, whether you pay for AU packages, you pay for credit suites, pay for whatever you paid for. This has to be paid by midnight Pacific Standard Time, which is 3 a.m. Eastern Time. You need to be paid by the 15th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard or 2.59 a.m. Eastern Standard. Okay? That has to be paid by that date. I don't want anybody's excuses as to why they cannot pay it. I told you four times. I will go here and you give me a moment. I will pause and copy and paste the link in here so everybody else can watch it. Why I said four or five times through video, do not, do not, do not put any money down on any service you cannot pay off by the 15th. On the 15th, you forfeit whatever you paid because Jay does not like money in his account that's not his. I like, I'm not a bank. I'm not holding your money for you to have a, you'd be able to hold it here and be able to pull money out when you want to pull money out because you're in trouble because you couldn't manage your own money. That's not my fault. You told me you're going to be able to pay by the 15th. You're going to pay by the 15th. I told you don't put no money down if you can't pay it in full. You can't pay it in full. Do not do it. Don't do it. Don't put the money down. I don't want anybody can. Jay took my money. When I put, I put money down, and Jay took it. Like I want to hear that crap because I will. I will copy and paste for everybody to see. I said on the twenty eighth. Do not put any money down that you cannot pay by March the fifteenth. And I'm saying that again, so people can actually hear this. So you might come back and watch another live video and see somebody on here saying, "Well, Jay took my money." Uh, whatever, whatever. And then I told you on the video through a live, which I do not delete my lives, unless it's just too lit. But most of my lives, I keep posted on my page. Okay, so um, so I made that clear again. If you gotta get a borrow a loan from somebody, cash advance your money or whatever to pay off your balance on the fifteenth, do that because I am not responsible to hold on to your money for you. This is not layaway. Okay. I don't like holding money. Y'all know my pet peeve is wasting my time. My second pet peeve under that 
is having money in my account that's not mine. I I, I totally hate that, okay? <laughs> you said, I was here doing that live you speak of. Yeah, I know. I said that. I don't know how many times I said it. I said it so many times that you know people probably fell off the live because they were like, man, I want to I want to hear this. So I they, they, they clicked off of it. So um, just letting you know, man, I'm running a business. You already know businesses have certain dates or whatever. If you don't pay by that date, you forfeit. If you got a layaway, you don't pay it off, that money's gone. Like, sorry. Okay. That's just how it goes. I'm not trying to be sitting here trying to manage what goes in and get out. No, I, I don't do that. I don't like to do that. I like to have my money separated to where I know what's going on. <laughs> Said it plenty of times. Okay. So don't even trip. Like I'm doing something to you. Cause I got people already calling me, texting me like, AJ, hey, send me that refund. I can't pay it off. Ain't no refund going to happen. Ain't, gonna re ain't no refunds for what? Send you refund for what? I don't even know what the money, I don't know what you're talking about. That money has already been paid out. I've already paid money out to my assistant and everything based on what you've already paid. Okay. So ain't no refund back for that. That's why I said, don't pay it unless you can pay it off. Very simple. Well, Jay, things happen and all that and this and this and this. So you're telling me that you have no savings, you have nothing in place to protect yourself if things happen. Like nothing. Okay. Still not my problem because the people and the bills and all that, they don't care either. You know what I'm saying? So just trying to be real with you. Don't try to play that woe is me. This ain't the flea market. This ain't no deal going on. Okay. Just want to make that clear first, all right? So, hey to all my new viewers. How you doing? I'm Jay. I'm too real for some of these people. I'm just I'm just too real. Some people won't ever, you know, mess with me probably who are watching this video. Some people will never even use my services because they're like, yo, this guy, you know, he talking too crazy or whatever. This is not the status quo of uh, what I call the status quo of, of, of credit talk. I'm going to give you that real talk and tell you what it is, okay? And so... Uh, Let's get it. Let's get in. Let's get in. Now, your credit profile. Credit profile is important. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, your credit profile. Now, if you want to build your credit profile, and I, I'll show you something real quick. Okay. Because people always ask me stupid stuff. This is the stupid stuff I get. You know what I'm saying? They're like, well, Jay, you know, you don't. You don't show nothing like you don't, you know, how am I going to be able to uh, trust you with my credit, man? You know, what's your what's your credit look like? Well, Jay, I know you got credit cards and stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so you can get my heart increase off without deleting my accounts, man. Like, you know, how are you going to be able to do that? Like, that's not possible. Oh, okay. Let me show you. Zero increase. This is not a screenshot, by the way. Not a screenshot. This is actually in the app, Okay. And go back so you can see it in the app. Okay. <laughs> this is in the app. All right. Not a screenshot. No increase. Let's see it again. No increase. Okay. Look, let's look at accounts. Let's look at accounts as far as how old these accounts are. Let's see when the accounts were open. Let me see accounts opened. Accounts open. Let me see if I show that. There it says accounts open. Open. What's this? USAA. Oh, look at that. Hey, there's a good account right there. You see that? That's when that account was open right there. Still in the app. That's when the account was open. You see that? Still in the app. Account was open January, December, November. What's that? When did I open that account? Oh, I opened it in November, but I didn't have my first payment until December. So that's three months ago, but I don't have any increase on that USAA card. And I have other cards as well. I might apply for a whole lot of more cards. I might get some more funding. Just waiting for some things to be updated to where I have some things paid down. And that way I can go ahead and apply. I'm about to do a whole round of crazy funding. I'm about to have some 
I'm trying to get at least five business credit cards and 10 personal credit cards. So I'm about to get 15 credit cards, try to give me about $500,000 in funding. Uh, that's my goal this round to get 500,000. So uh, I'm not playing games. I'm not just talking to be talking. I'm, I'm telling you this because I do this. Like, um, you know, I live this. So um, I'm going to get to everybody's question. I know y'all probably asked them up there. I'm just kind of dabbling down here for a minute because I'm down here. Um, so why our credit karma score is so different? I'm going to get to that here in a minute. I will. I promise. All right. So um, <clears throat> make sure y'all who need to get out of check systems, y'all hit me up. I do have the check systems removals. That way I can help y'all get out of check systems. Um, I have had a lot of clients be able to get some um, Navy Federal cards lately. If you haven't got a Navy Federal credit card yet or a Navy Federal account yet, please, please, please go ahead and get your Navy Federal account. You're definitely going to need it, especially if you're going through me to get funding or you want to get funding for yourself, you want to apply for yourself and everything, but you need to get a Navy account. You need a Navy account. They'll give you the most money on your TransUnion out of every TransUnion uh, report that's going to be ran for your credit. Navy will give you the most money, period. <laughs> They'll give you the most money. Yes, I could charge some people this. Why do that? I'll tell you right now. Go call them. Get you an account. Just tell them somebody in your family died. That that's immediate family. Tell them to serve the military. They'll give you a checking account. Get that checking account. Um, put five, ten dollars in it. Go apply for a credit card. If you're ready to apply, if you're not ready to apply, get some AUs. If you don't have access to AUs, hit me up. If you have negative items in your account, don't apply. Wait till those negative items come off. Because you want to try to get like five to twenty thousand when you first start. That's the point. You want to get a high limit when you first sign up, um, and you get uh, increases every three to four months if you call them and ask for an increase. As well as you can apply for a second card at three or four months if you want to. So you can get one card, get that second card, and also get some increases, and you'll have maybe thirty to forty, fifty thousand dollars in credit cards uh, right out the gate. So. Get you a Navy card. Don't play with it. Get your Navy checking account. Don't play with it. Um, <laughs> don't wait. Get the checking account now before they change something. They might change something. You'd be like, well, I was going to wait till I wanted to apply to get a checking account. Nope. Uh, get your checking account today with Navy Federal. Call them on the phone today. Google the phone number. Get a checking account now before people catch on to this and they find out people are doing this and now you can't get an account. Okay? Do it now. Today. When you get off work, please do it. Get your account uh, taken care of, okay? Now, <clears throat> um, there are certain cards that you want to um, you want to get as far as like the Discover card. I saw a question about Discover card and the Amex card. Trust me, I'm getting to that. I did not forget about you. I promise. Just bear with me here. And um, you want to get... Um, some some lines of credit that are look that, that 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 really look good on your credit report. There are certain lines of credit that really look good, and that would be Discover and Amex. Discover and Amex are going to look good on your credit profile. Period. If you got a Discover and an Amex card that's in good standing on your credit report, it's very hard to get denied for stuff or not get a high limit uh, with some other institution. Let's say like a smaller bank. If I apply for a smaller bank. And they see Navy, they see um, Amex and Discover, or they see you already have that. Let's say you got a Navy or Dis I'm sorry, uh, I keep saying Navy. You you got a, a Discover or an Amex AU on your profile, whether it's a primary or AU, you're going to automatically get more credit. I don't know why that happens. Don't even ask me why that happens. I've just been in testing and seen this crap. Okay, but it's something about the Amexes. And discovers that when you apply for smaller banks for money, they give more. Somebody could have the same credit limits with other banks and get less. And the credit profile, I mean, it'll be the same average amount of years. It'll be the same credit score, roughly about 10 points, four points, something like that. Um, like all these, all these different similarities, but one person might get 3,000. Another person get eight to twenty thousand. Like it's it's just crazy, ridiculous how that works. So um, you know, if you can help it, if you're if you're in the market of getting a credit card right now, I would highly suggest that you get an Amex or a uh, Discover card if you're in the market to get one. If you need 
uh, help to get one, I do have a referral link to get one. My referral link, we can both get paid a commission or you know, $50, $100, whatever, credit just for getting the account on top of what you're going to get for your introductory rate. Get money that way, okay? Not saying it for that reason, but I like free money. It's like you like free money, okay? So, uh, but it is it is something that's beautiful about those cards, bro. I don't know what it is. Jay, what's up with that USAA? I need that plug. Um, I don't. I haven't really researched a whole lot about how to get the USAA card yet without having to, without having the affiliation in some way. Like I'm sure the people I said, well, it's simple. I just haven't done it yet. Okay, but once I once I start looking into it, I'll figure out a way to do it. And I always like to call and talk to somebody as well as uh um yeah. <laughs> I'm not get I'm I'm gonna be fair. Let me scroll back up and get to the rest of these questions, okay? Rodney Sleepers, you you must be new to my channel. Welcome, Rodney Sleepers. How you doing? Uh, I mentioned uh, Navy Federal in all my videos about how to uh, get an account. I'm sure somebody's going to tell you here in a minute. <laughs> somebody's going to comment here and tell you exactly how to get one because they probably heard me say it 2,500 times, and I know they're going to go do that. Um, <clears throat> so let me go back and see these, uh, see these things here. Get your questions answered. Man, I'm looking to lease a BMW i8 this summer. Anthony Reed, what's going on, Anthony? You want you gonna get my car, man? Why you gotta get my car? That's what I want, man. I want an i8 Spider, bro. That's what I want, really bad. Uh, I think I'm gonna start with a Maserati first, just getting a little uh, used Maserati, just for a little starter car, and then kind of move my way up to different dimension to getting that i8. You know what I'm saying? But uh, shout out to you for getting that, bro. Definitely send me some pictures, you know? Ain't no wrong with flexing. You can flex with that. Definitely flex with that. Well, let me know how to secure your services. I need them off. Carmen Triplett, um, 18333. And I'll put it in here again so you can see it uh, again for my number. You can call right now if you like. You'll get my assistant. She'll tell you the prices and everything. And she'll take care of you right now if you'd like. Okay, when I file bankruptcy, my derogatory account still show up along with and after my bankruptcy is discharged. Uh, it is possible, even if you do have a bankruptcy, that they, they can still show up. But what you need to do is let them know that those things are part of your bankruptcy and they need to come off your report. You have to write in those letters. They still stick around. But in a lot of cases, yes, they will stay, depending on um, how the process is done they can still have some things left over on your credit. And it also depends on what uh, bankruptcy you file. Okay, so I have zero increase, therefore the impact should be minimum with two credit cards. Correct. You should get about six points, your, your, your score should go down. Uh, Jay, what do you charge to remove increase? $50 per inquiry. Uh, the cartoon character, Jay knows credit is nice. Yeah, I actually, um, <clears throat> actually had that that done um and it looked uh i thought it came out i thought it came out pretty good I thought it came out pretty good i'm gonna show you uh show them to you here because i actually have more that um are not up there so i'll show you the other ones here so you got that one right there And of course, you know, that's me because I'm going to be wearing some J's. Okay. Definitely me. Um, there. Then, um, of course, with the uh, with the black background, of course, there too. Like that. <clears throat> and of course, the one that y'all are seeing right now. on there so uh so yeah trying to switch it up trying to make it different um you know i want to change the way people are looked at who wear hoodies that everybody who wears hoodies is not threatening and uh it's crazy because you got you got these guys um walking around in hollister 
you know, hoodies and American Eagle hoodies and Pac Sun hoodies, and they're not looked at as threatening. But as soon as a a black guy wears a hoodie, he's automatically a threat. It's, it, you know, some way, which is crazy because anytime I watch robbery videos, it's always a well, not always, but I'm saying when I watch them and a person not of color is robbing someplace, they usually have a hoodie on. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's, it's crazy. Anyway, back to the questions. Hey, I know you all are busy. Haven't gotten an email back about the referral program for the traditional credit repair. Okay, so if you are if you are already on my uh, standard credit repair service, what you can do is you can refer five people to that standard service uh, just have them call me, let them know that you called. And let's say this is like your first month. You paid one month already, kind of like how Ashley is right now. Ashley Chalk is going through that process now. And like, let's say she refers five people to the service. Well, all she would have to do is make her first payment, which her first payment is $120. She started off paying $79 up front. $120 was her first month. If she was to refer five people to the service, she will automatically not have any more monthly payments. So she would save 600 bucks because she referred five people. Now, if you're a person who is not in the service and you want to get paid off the referral for that, um, what I could do is, you know, I could pay you if, if, if it's on the, the traditional side, um, I could pay you work out some type of, you know, commission, something like that. It's not going to be stupid high because it's a traditional service because I still have to write letters and, you know, all that kind of stuff as well. So it could be anywhere between, you know, $25, maybe $50, depending on how many you're going to be uh, bringing in as far as on a traditional repair. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but yeah, it won't be very high for that. Now, when it comes to the sweep service, it's a little bit different. But traditional repair, it probably around $25 to $50 max for anybody that you refer uh, for that service. But, uh, yeah, haven't had time to email anybody really back about a whole lot of stuff. It's just... Uh, been taking care of other other things. All right, next question. Good morning, Jay. Enjoyed the vid and ordered the book. Fantastic. Awesome. Did you see the email to you regarding the personal tax con consultation? Um, I did not see that email yet. I will go back through my emails. Like I said, I'm just trying to catch back up from my crazy day yesterday. So I will look back through that and uh, give you a hit back about that. Uh, but I'll definitely set it up if you want to get that done. Um, we can set something up for tomorrow to do the consultation. It won't be today, but I can get something set up for you, give you a call, set up a time for tomorrow to, to get that done. 305 Trucking, can I use my Social Security on two different EINs by the same department store? I don't know what you mean by the same department store. I'm kind of a hospital business with my social. Yeah, you can use your social for your business. Yeah, you don't have to use an EIN. It's better to use the EIN, but if you just have a traditional business where you're the sole proprietorship, you can still get a business, um, a business line of credit using your social security number. Depending on the business, though, some businesses will have it to where you have to apply for an EIN, and you can get an EIN for free, of course, online digitally without any paperwork sent to your house. Now that you can just literally go to the iris.gov website apply for EIN while you're in the store and have the EIN shown like on the screen, screenshot that EIN number and you have it forever. And that way you don't have to really run out anywhere and do anything. Let's see, I definitely need this video. Got that, got that, got that. Contact me, we talked about that. Talk about this, uh, those credit cards you suggested for bad credit. My score is 575, yes, you should apply for them. Is it really hard to get approved for an Amex and Discover? Also, what is the basic required score. Okay. So if you want to discover a prepaid card, um, clients have told me they need, you need to have a 680. So I'm not saying that I knew that already because I never really got with their um, prepaid cards. But if you want to get a proper discover, when I say proper, I mean like a high limit discover or a high limit Amex, your score is going to be above 750. If you want to be proper, you can still get a good amount Having a 710, 720, something like that, you definitely can still get a good amount. I just suggest 
to get that score as high as you can before you apply. The higher you can start, the bigger your increases. When you want to get uh, credit line increases, they can go a whole lot higher if you start somewhere low. If you start somewhere high, let me say that. If you start low, it takes you more time to kind of get up to a higher limit of credit. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, now I just want you to look at my profile and tell me what I need to do. Yeah, Mr. Villefranc, you can do that through my assistant. She can look at your profile and tell you what you need to do. That's what she does. That's what she's paid for. Okay. Uh, Andre Anders, do you do discounts for the military? <laughs> I like that. I like that. It's fantastic, man. Uh, but no, no 10% off for, for military right now. Um, see, it doesn't hurt to ask. Hey, Jim, ready for you to do my funding. Let me know when to call. Steve Keen. Steve, have you already um, taken care of your funding fee? If not, you can call right now with my assistant. She'll take care of your funding fee and then also get your information. What I need as far as information to apply for your funding. Tell her what type of funding you want, whether it's personal loan funding or whether it's a credit card funding. Let her know exactly what she needs to be doing as far as uh, what I need to be doing. Uh, and she'll tell you which, which information that I need in order to start the application process and get everything started. Because with the funding, with credit card funding, I don't need you on the phone. I need you to make your payment for the funding. Uh, give me all the information I need to start applying for you. And you can just sit back and just wait for the emails and stuff to come in saying you approved for 8,000, 10,000, you know, logins, all that kind of stuff. I can just do everything without having you sit there and wait on the phone for me or me waste your time. I can have our, everything already put in and everything without having to have you held up. You can be running errands, taking care of your family, working your job, whatever, and not sit on the phone with me. Now, I will call you after I'm done and say, okay, just so you know, you got a total of, I did 15 applications. I got you nine credit cards out of the 15 applications I did. You got six, seven thousand dollars in credit cards. I got you, you know, five thousand dollars in personal loan, or whatever the case may be. Okay. <clears throat> see. Must be in a big spoon uh, for that mac and cheese, man. Uh, yeah, and I like to. Tell, I know people be singing like, man. I'd be making. I think I'd be making stuff up. Like, bro, I'm, this is really my shells and cheese right here. Like, this is literally what I had to eat my four bites of those shells and cheese. <laughs> so I like people to know I'm not just up here just talking because it sounds good. Like I hate people that they, they just waste lies. Like you just, I call it a waste of a lie. Like you're wasting a lie on what? Like trying to impress people for what? Like why do all that? Why flex and say you're doing this and you got this going on? People say they have a business. Don't even have a business plan. Don't even have no incorporation done. Never wrote any type of anything for their business. No vision for the business. Ain't made a dollar yet, but they got a business. You know what I'm saying? Don't stay up late. Don't even try to operate it like a business, but you got a business. Like, wasting lies. Like, you know, girls lie. Guys lie. About stupid stuff. For what? Why do you do that? What's the point? Like, just keep it real. Say, look. You know what I'm saying? If they ain't hitting it right, just say, hey, bro. You ain't doing a good job, man, nigga. You need to step your game up and start learning how to hit it right. Something. Like, don't lie. Don't do not do that. Like, don't feed no egos and all that. Like, sometimes you got to break that ego for to get it built back up. Like, bro, you know what I'm saying? You, you ain't hitting. You ain't doing something right. Tell that girl, look, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't doing it right. Like, your head game ain't there. You got to step your head game up, watch some YouTube videos, watch some porn or something, and step that up. Okay? So, um... Yeah, people just be wasting. Life. I just, I hate it. Like, I'm just so blunt. People, some people don't even like me because I'm blunt. But some people mess with me because I am blunt. I'm gonna tell you how it is. I ain't gonna tell you that BS to make you feel good, to make everything sound like it's okay when it's not okay. Sometimes you just gotta be blunt with people. You gotta tell them, yo, this ain't right. A lot of people don't mess with me as far as friends because I'm too blunt. I'm gonna tell you what you need to do. I'm gonna tell you about yourself. If you want somebody to pat you on the back, tell you everything is okay, I'm not that guy. If you want somebody to tell you, look, man, you effing up, get your ish together. That's me. That's the, that's the kind of friend or the kind of person or the type of encourager I am because everybody who's saying everything is okay, they are not your friends. And they know that you effed up. They not for you, bro. They're not for you, sis. You need people around you who tell you like, yo, you ain't the ish. You ain't nothing. You ain't got it going on. You could do more. You could be more. 
You ain't reached success yet. You ain't there yet. You ain't made it. Don't get it twisted. You need people around you like that. A lot of friends I have around me are like that. They'll tell me that I'm messing up. They'll tell me I need to step my game up. They'll tell me I'm not doing enough. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, that's not why you came here, right? You came here for credit. Um, let's see. How do you recommend sending out my dispute letter? Should I certify? Do I can track and see uh, when they receive it? Okay. Mr. Lee Green, no matter where you're sending or who you're sending it for, what you're sending it about, you'd never send a letter that's not certified. Never. Point blank period. Every letter you send better be certified or you ain't doing credit repair. You just sending letters that may get lost somewhere. You better... Every time, you better make it certified, bro. Bro, it shouldn't matter how much it costs when it comes to your credit. That makes sense to me, but not to a lot of people, okay? Like, I teach my family and my friends to not order how much something costs. Order what you want. When I go, if I want to go out to eat, if I go out to eat, I don't order based on, I don't look at, okay, flounder, fries, slaw, corn, cabbage, $17.99. $17.99. Dang, $17.99? Shoot, man. Can I afford this? $17.99. $17.99, man. Dang, I do want some flounder, though. Man, $17 for flounder? Man, I don't know if I want to spend $17. I don't do that. Flounder. That's what I want. Uh, let me get cheesecake and uh, fries. I don't look at the price. I don't care about what the price is. That's what I want. So order what you want, not how much it costs. Look at the value. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm eating it. I already know it's going to be good. I know the quality I'm paying for. I order what I want. If I get some clothing, like this is Armani, this is an Armani hoodie, I know what the quality I'm getting for. Yes, I don't care. It's $300. I don't care. That's what I want. Order what you want. If you're not ready to be like that as far as ordering stuff, then you don't need to eat out. Don't go shopping. If you can't get what you want, why are you going shopping for Wear what the hell you got. Just keep wearing that until you can get the money to get what you want. Save your money, invest your money, flip your money, and just go to Walmart and get some panties and get some shirts and some blouses that cost five, ten dollars until you can afford what you want to buy. You know, and the, but a lot of people they don't have that type of mentality, and that's why they stay stuck because your mind can only grow when you expand it. Just like with your muscles, like I'm trying to get my muscle back up. Y'all see, I lost a lot of weight. Y'all probably don't know, you know, if you watch me live or whatever, you know, I, I, I done lost a lot of a lot of weight, a lot of my muscle. I've been slacking and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get my muscle back up. But in order to get my muscles up, they have to expand. OK. And so with your mind, your mind has to expand. If you want your money to expand, your mind's got to expand. If you want your muscles to expand, your mind has to expand. It's the same thing. And so you have to think outside of the typical the typical things you do, you got to stretch your mind. If you want to stretch your mind, take your butt down to a dealership for a car you you think you can't afford. Go look at a Lamborghini dealership. Go look at a Maserati dealership. Go and go to the Gucci store and start looking at price tags. Just look at those price tags. And you'll be like, oh, man, this is too much for a purse. This is crazy. I'm not paying that much for a purse. But if you expand your mind like, yo, I can be able to afford this and still be able to live comfortably. Some of us are speaking like, yes, universe, God, you know, Buddha, whoever you believe in, you know, start speaking out to the universe that you're going to be able to be able to afford this and that not affect you. Look at a price tag and let that price tag not when you can look at a price tag and it doesn't make you go like that. That's when you know you've made it mentally to where looking at price tags don't matter to you. Oh, that's too much for a purse, a shirt, a sweater, whatever like that, because you've already expanded your mind because you know the value of what you're buying. And when it comes to credit repair, people who know, like, which is mainly a lot of my truck driver guys who call me, a lot of professionals, a lot of doctors, a lot of lawyers, um, and a lot of people who make $30,000 a year call me, but they understand the move that they cannot make with their credits. When I tell them a the price, they don't even flinch. Okay, how I pay? All right, Jay, send me the invoice. Okay, cool. I don't get that from them where they're like, oh man, well, yo, bro, you can't hook me up? You can't make the price any lower than that, man? Like, man, that's expensive. 
I don't know if I can afford that. Like, am I supposed to respond to that? And you say, oh, I, I can't afford that. Am I supposed to say, oh, I'm sorry. Let me look at my calculator and let's see if I can make the price lower for you so I can get your money. I don't do that. This is the price. You going to pay it? Okay. Well, give me a call when you're ready. Have a great day. Bye. Ain't no negotiating my price. I'm not going to sit here and try to fuss with you about that. You call me. I don't call you. People reach out to me. That's not, I'm not cold calling anybody. People calling me saying they want their credit fixed. This is how much it costs. My assistants say, this is how much it costs. Okay? And you get a text message saying, this is how much it costs. The whole, well, I got two jobs. Well, such and such on YouTube charges more, charges less than you, you Jay. That's great. Why are you watching my videos? Go watch that dude videos. Go go buy it over there. <laughs> I don't understand the whole like there is no competition for me. I don't have competition cuz I don't make it when it comes to looking left, looking right. People ask me all the time, do I watch such and such as videos? Do I watch some guy with 609 letters? Do I watch this girl who does I don't watch my videos unless somebody makes me watch it. Somebody says, okay, well, here's a video, bro. I think you need to watch this. Okay, send me a link, and I might look at it. Other than that, I'm not sitting here trying to find out who's the next big thing on YouTube, who's the next big guy with credit, who does this for cheaper. I don't care about that. That's not going to change what I charge or change what I do because they're not going to do what I do. They're not going to do a live video every day, five days a week, if they can, which this week is going to be four days a week. But they're not doing lives. They're not answering free questions. They have numbers you call and you get services. You don't get no live information like this. I know you don't because nobody's ever even mentioned it before. If they do, you let me know they do a live every day. Who does a live five days a week about credit? Who? Tell me. Who answers questions for you when you call them? Who that you can call on the phone right now that you can call and you always get somebody to answer the phone? I got people call me all the time and say, hey, bro, I'm just surprised y'all answered the phone. I done call so many credit guys that don't even answer the phone or who never send an email back. Now, my, mind you, I'm like a day or two behind on emails, but I still email back. If you got, if you send me an email, I send emails back. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like I'm not trying to beat everybody else. I'm trying to be in the space that I'm trying to be in. <laughs> I have my own world going on. I can't see anybody else's world. I got enough stuff going on with clients and family. I don't see nothing else. And so um, I didn't mean to go into a little rant like that. It, it happens. Y'all know sometimes that happens when you watch my channel. Um, let's see. Rodney, I want a consultation. Call the number 1-8-3-3-3-J-Nose. Uh, let's see. Excuse me. Advanced user charge in the old account for you. I want to do credit suite with you and pay for uh, just the bankruptcy. You can do that. You can definitely pay for just the bankruptcy. But I will tell you this, okay? If your bankruptcy shows a zero balance and you have, let's say you got four other accounts that are negative on your credit profile, four other accounts that are still negative, and those accounts hold up to being less than 5K in debt, it's going to cost you the same price to do that one bankruptcy well, no, that's that's incorrect because you have that bankruptcy plus additional. You you have a little bit of additional charge. It'll be additional, but it won't cost you that much more to have those other four accounts added to that. It'll cost you more if you were to do one thing and then come back and do another thing for your credit as far as the sweep goes. If you do it all at one time, it'll cost you a whole lot less money. But up to you. If you're doing a bankruptcy and you have zero balance, it'll cost you. $800. That's what it's going to cost you to get that off. $800. That'll take care of that bankruptcy if it's a zero balance. Let's see. I was here doing that live. J2 Real. 300 to tell me what I need on credit or fix my credit. Uh, the $300, I'm not sure what I said there. That's not nothing to do with any type of uh, credit or anything like that. That was just, I think I was talking about another. Um, um, another a consultation with that was for taxes or something like that, if you heard $300, but that wasn't for credit. Uh, OTR said it got real quiet in here. 
I remember that live when you said that. Damn, bro, I see you about your ish. Uh, Burlington TJ Maxx will take your Lelway money also. That's why if it ain't cash, I don't fool with it because ish does happen, but they don't care. Oh, yeah, speaking of Burlington TJ Maxx, those are my stores. Do not hate. I actually, I'm actually, I actually have to go there today. Hopefully, there's one. I think in the shop I go to, but I need, I, I want a couple of extra hoodies. I need some more zip hoodies with some zippers like this. I need some zipper hoodies. So um, I'm going to see if they have any over there at TJ Maxx because they be on the low. Um, let's see. Why are Credit Karma scores so different from Experian app scores? Okay. Great question, uh, Euvonia Bo. So Credit Karma and Experian. Experian is going to be your, if you're using the, I think you're using the regular experience. They're going to use a FICO 8 score. Okay, people tell me all the time that, you know, credit karma scores aren't accurate. They are accurate. Yeah, yeah, I know. They, they're accurate. Credit karma is accurate. 100% accurate. Don't argue. They're accurate. Now, why do I say that with all confidence? They're accurate for what they're accurate for. A lot of people don't know that that is your vantage score. And who owns the Vantage score? Okay, so the Vantage score is actually owned by all three credit bureaus. Okay, they're not just uh, some random thing that you know, just some made up crap. Okay, so right here it says that the Vantage score is a joint venture that was put together by all three credit bureaus. It is a company that's built that the credit bureaus actually own. Credit bureaus don't own the FICO scores. The FICO scoring model is just a model. Now, you have FICO 8, you got FICO 2, you got FICO 3, you got um, Fair Isaac, you got FICO V2, you got FICO 4, you got FICO Auto, you got FICO Bank Card. There's over, there's a hundred different FICO scoring models. So if you go into that by saying that the Vantage score of Credit Karma is not accurate, you also have to say that FICO scores aren't accurate because if you see all different FICO scores there are, it'll mess your head up. You'd be like, man, like what's going on? Like why are there so many different FICO scores, you know, in here? Like what's, what's, like, which one is accurate? That's why you can apply for a house and you look at your FICO score and you figure out your FICO score is a, um, that you see on your, on your credit karma or sorry, not credit, your experience might say 694. Then they run you for a house, and then they say that all your scores are all below 650 because they're using a different FICO scoring model than what you're using on your app. All right? So don't go by that. Don't believe the hype. Um, I didn't know that, Eric. They put my merchandise back on the floor, and that ticked me off. So that's why I just don't do it anymore, or I forgot. Did you ever look into NFCU business accounts? Uh, yes, I have one. Uh, I'm actually waiting on a second one, which Let's see oh let me, let me, let me. coming back from hell again. Kissing makeup on the way. I just started filling this out for my other LLC with the Navy small business uh, loan application, I'm trying to get a credit card with my other. Uh, incorporation called Fitz LLC. So, yes, I know about their business accounts, OTR. I'm on it. Um, let's see. What do you charge to train someone to do what you do? David Ben Israel. Um, it depends on what you mean by train. There are certain things that I do, and there are certain things that I can become a partner with. So you can actually give me some outsourcing work. So you might have some work because you bring it in clients, certain work that you cannot do. You can send that work to me and I'll uh, do that work for you. I have to legitimize your work, though. Some people try to just give me to fix them and their family's credit. I'm not stupid. OK, so I'll have to find out that you have a legitimate business that you're trying to run for credit repair and um, you send me clients. I can or you send me work. I can give you a wholesale price, something like that for a certain work that you need done. And um Take care of clients for you on a certain thing. Now, if you're talking about just traditional credit repair, uh, that right there is $2,500 if you want to know how to do it yourself. If you want one-on-one -on -one training from me to do it, you got to pay for that. Now, if you want to do credit sweeps, that's a whole nother monster. Um, 
I don't even charge anybody. I don't even teach that, to be honest. Not that part. But for credit repair, as far as how to properly do it, you, you pay for that. You also get all of my letters, all of my letter writing as far as how I write them. Um, so you can call them templates if you want, but I tell you to handwrite them anyway because my templates are better handwritten. I just tell you what needs to be on them and uh, I'll tell you about different fonts you need to have because fonts are also important when it comes to writing. And so, uh, yeah, you get all that. Say so you're going to be able to manage that many credit cards. Yeah, man, I already have a lot of credit cards now. It's just that um, I put it I put in my phone. Put it in my phone. Oh, man, ATL Capricorn is back. He's back. Let's see. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. I'm trying to catch up on these questions, so y'all please excuse me. Damn, there were a lot of questions here today. Y'all got me, boy. Haven't worked me today. Let's see. Navy Fed for the win. Uh, why do people think that when they give you 20K-ish, even 10K, that you got to use it all? Um, I'm not sure about that, OTR. Um, a lot of people think that, you know, oh, man, I don't want that much credit. No, you need that much credit, especially like if you want to use... If you have, if you want to have a running like six thousand dollars on your credit card, you need to have a twenty k card because that right there is thirty percent of the card, and you don't want to go over thirty percent. So if you want to have a running balance, keep it under six k, you're at least in the good scoring range with that credit card. If you get it down below ten percent, so that two thousand or less, then you're in the excellent range of carrying a balance on that credit card. So you'll have more flexibility that way. Um, so you don't have to max the whole entire card out. But if you wanted to, you definitely could do that. Um, just just know how to do it properly to get yourself back out the hole if you're in the hole. OK, but a lot of people think that you're just supposed to get 30K credit card. That means, oh, I'm going to blow the whole 30K. Like, no, nah, that's not how that works, because if you do that, you're going to have a $500 a month credit card payment, if not more than that. And some folks can't afford that. And that's why they, when they do that, they end up having to lose everything and get their credit right back in the wrong place because they maxed out their cards. But um, yeah, how important is it to get check systems removed and where did it show up on your credit? Actually, it may not show up on your credit at all. It'll just be in the bank system to where the bank won't give you a card. So if you can't get a checking account uh, with a certain bank and you know they see you in check systems, you also can't get certain credit cards either with certain banks that use check systems. So you're blocked from checking accounts and credit cards. That's why it's important to get it removed. How do you get into the USAA? I have military friends, but if I'm not mistaken, you can only add spouses or children. That is correct. Spouses and children. I think like mother and father, I think you can add as well. Um, but yeah, I'm still working on a way to get into them. Uh, so Jay, when are you going to do that video dedicated to your thoughts on a different credit monitoring service? Would appreciate that very much. Uh, I just haven't done it yet. I got so many videos. I haven't even recorded videos. That's the thing. Like I think I've gone like, I don't know, two weeks where I didn't record a video, like actually record one, not just uh, do a live. Probably been like two weeks. I know I'm slacking. Um, <clears throat> but it's, it's coming, man. It's, it's, it's coming. Be patient. Uh, Jay, what's up with that USAA? I need that plug. I'm working on it, man. Working on it. Also, I know you hate my FICO, but I'm not sure if you ever said why. Uh, my FICO sucks. That's all you need to know. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so... They only show a year's worth of increase on my FICO and not two years. People say, well, only the one year is all, all that really counts. No, it does not. All two years count. Trust and believe me, you can be, you can not get approved for something just based on you having too many inquiries from a year ago. So um, don't get it twisted from what they say. Oh, does it have a high impact? Or if you got these inquiries now with buying this house, it's only going to count as one inquiry. No, it doesn't count as one inquiry. It shows 17 freaking inquiries on my credit report. It does not count as one. Okay? So, um, yeah. But anyway, my FICO, they suck. They also um, don't go into 
the right amount of details you need in order to make a great uh, a great uh, evaluation of your credit. They don't show everything, which is stupid. Like, why aren't you showing me everything that's affecting my credit? Not just what you think doesn't affect my credit, but so much. That's why I don't mess with them. Um, do you see your credit union for funding? And how long of history do you need to get that funding uh, with the pen fed? Um, I would say with the pit fed and DCU, I would say you need at least four years, at least four years of an average history. If you want to get money with them, how to get Navy. If you don't have one in the army, I talked about that. Where all y'all need, where are y'all need to save money? Let's say if I have a Navy fed account and credit card, would that help with USAA credit card? Uh, yes. If you're able to get a, uh, USAA account, yeah. It'll definitely help you get a credit card if you have a good history. Killer Shark, don't buy no BMW. Man, I've been buying BMWs since I was 23 years old, man. That's all I have. Uh, I just like BMWs. I know that people hate them. Some people hate them and all that. Uh, I just like BMWs, man. You know what I'm saying? I like what I like. I like what I like. Just added on an Amex as an AU, but they didn't ask me for social security number and the address used for me is different than where I live now. How will Amex report it on my credit profile? Just add an Amex as an AU. That's very hard for them to actually show up. They don't have your address and they don't have a social. Um, now, if you still have that old address that's listed on your credit report, if it's still listed there, you didn't get it removed off, it can, it can still report. I'll probably double check that AU though. But as long as it's still listed there, they should be able to report it for you. Okay, Ashley answered that question for me. Thanks, Ashley. Any advice for Navy auto loans? I want that uh, 17330. Okay, um, of course, your Equifax is going to have to be better in this case. If you want a Navy auto loan, you need to have your Equifax uh, in a good position. Of course, having low utilization, least amount of increase as possible. Um, but you can also apply just, just for a pre-approval to see if you're pre-approved. They can do a soft pull of your credit and uh, tell you how much you can, uh, how much you apply for. I'm sorry, how much you qualify for, or to tell you that you don't pre-qualify. But um, yeah, the best way to get them is still to get some authorized users, man. If you don't have any negative items on that uh, Equifax report, boost that score up with some AUs, bro, and they'll give you one. This worked for me from taking advice from Jay's vids, and I have mine also. Yep. Removing increase, do I need to put fraud alert on my file first? Looking into doing uh, the bomb service. You, have, you need to do nothing. You need to. You don't have to do any steps. When you do my service, there's no steps you have to take. The only thing you have to do as far as a step is if you have a bankruptcy. That's the only time I tell you that you have to do something on your side. Okay, in order in order for it to help me get it off, and it doesn't include any type of police report type crap. Other than that, any suite, anything like that, I don't need you to do anything but just sign up. Okay, so all I need you to do and be able to provide your personal information that way they can prove your identity. That's it. Okay. Um, what's up, Jay? Columbus, Ohio. How you doing, Jerry? We got to get together, man. I'm going to get together with you the other day, but yesterday was not the day, brother. Crazy day. Mr. Wonderful, how you doing? That's cool. I got a stupid pipeline. $25 sounds good. Okay. 50. <laughs> Jay, why do you suggest a Navy Federal Credit Union check in our savings account? I have USAA and see no need. Great question, David. I'm not knocking uh, you. I love USAA. I have USAA account myself. They're fantastic. I just like having more money. I don't know. I like more money. I like more leverage. I like credit. I like having a lot of credit. I want a million dollars in credit cards. And some of my some of my followers, they want a million dollars too, or a hundred thousand or twenty thousand. And so if you get a Navy Federal account, you have two banks now because you got USAA. You got two banks you can kind of play with and get money from. And so you might got 15000 with your USAA. You come over to Navy, they might give you 20000 So now you got a total of $35,000. You know what I'm saying? At that point, it's like, hey, why not? Why not have more credit available? 
that you can utilize and leverage and invest or, you know, whatever. Let's see. I just like this. Credit repair at seven no, 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 six months and six months free. Yep. Exactly. Hey Jay, I wanted to see if my sleep was accepted. Yep. You're all done, bro. Your sleep was already submitted. You were already in the game. No games. You're already in the game. No games. It's fun. Uh they don't have a business business. Yep. My business ready to go. Can't wait to get your business process get right so I can build it up more and get funny. Yes, sir. No, preserve some of that honesty in certain situations. <laughs> step up, step up. I can't take the realness today. Man, pull out that tax video again. Oh, uh, man. I got more stuff, man. I might give y'all some tax information today. Y'all hold tight. I might throw some taxes on the grill. Let's throw some tax knowledge on the grill today. Why not? I got a little bit of time. 258. I got a little bit of time. I always told you, pay for what you want. Big facts, big facts. I don't worry about the cost either. Dollar menu, baby. You know what I'm saying? You go to the McDonald's, man, you make it rain, son. You already know what you came here for. You know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, whatever the cost. That burger, $5, I got that. You know what I'm saying? Take that $5, slam it on the table like a space card. Like it's a big joker. You know what I'm saying? No, You know what I came here for. Um, that's funny, man. That's funny. I love it. America's on welfare, eat at Golden Crowl and Cracker Barrel Buffet. Boy, ATL, boy, he be going hard, man. I love his trolling. I'm sorry, but he be funny. <laughs> Jay dropping that it that ancient Eastern wisdom today. I don't care about that price. If I want it, I will get it. Facts. Uh, <laughs> How much do you charge to remove old addresses? Uh, Louis J., you can do that yourself, man. I'm not even going to knock you and try to get you to pay me some money that you don't need to pay me, bro. Louis J., if you just decide you just don't want to do it, I might charge you, I don't know, $25 or something, man. I, I've never even had somebody ask me that before. But if you want, if you just need me to do it, I'll do it. But you can just uh, send mailings into the credit bureaus or fax it in yourself. Um, that's it. And, and just say, I want to remove these old addresses off my credit profile. That's it. Experian will give you a hard time, but Equifax and TransUnion will take it off immediately. You can just call them on the phone and just have them remove it as well. Yep, V3, V5, V8, V9. Yeah, so many different ones, bro, for the FICOs. So <laughs> uh, let me see where I'm at. All this information out here. Y'all being, stop being lazy. That's what I'm talking about. We're in the information age, man. Everything's out there for you. You can get it. People giving out free information all day and people not taking it. Why Navy Federal asks for grandfather access number or social number or you can't join? I haven't had anybody tell me that. I think somebody, I'm, everybody I've had has been able to call and get an account. So uh, what I would do, Jennifer Ackerman, is I would hang up and call back, talk to somebody else. Because I've had people all this week and last week get accounts. And I know for a fact their grandparents and parents are not uh, in the military. Yep. There's like 20 scores. You're right. Yes, I have four Navy federal business accounts. Murphy, Ashley. I see you. I'm on, I'm getting to the second one, man. I'm 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 coming up there. I, I got I'm gonna have to get seven business filings done with them. I'm around 50, 65, 1500 total credit card, credit total, 550 credit, one finger hut, short credit history, two collection accounts. How can I get above a 680? Will my jewelry club help? My jewelry club will help you with another primary, but it looks like you already have what one, two, three, four. You really don't need my jewelry club unless you just want to have more. Nothing wrong with having more primaries, but you don't necessarily need to have it in order to be great. That's my call right now. Um, but if you want to get a score buzz of 680, you need to get rid of those collections. Two collections that'll that'll get you in the high 600s, getting rid of those. 
But then after you do that, you know, just over time as well is going to help your score. But if you want to get funding, once you get those collections off, and make sure you don't have any charge-offs either. Some people forget about the charge-offs. Don't forget, charge-offs still matter. Don't forget that closed accounts you have still matter. If those closed accounts have late payments. Those got to go too. You just can't remove, okay, I got two collections, Jay. Can you help me? People ask me that. All, people tell me that all the time. Then I go look at their credit profile. And I open up all their credit files from open accounts to closed accounts. And they have missed payments on a lot of closed accounts. And they got charge-offs. And it might be a $0 charge-off, but that charge-off also had late payments on that account. So you got to remove all of those things, okay? Because you can have a clean credit profile and still not have a 680. But once you clean it up, you add some authorized users to it in combination with your primaries. You'll be able to get some funding and have the score that you want. Is it true on business credit cards that you can, oh, ticket for mentorship? We'll talk about that OTR. I don't really have a ticket. It just depends on what you're talking about, mentorship and what. Uh, you're talking about like teachings, a different thing, but we'll go into that. Is it true on business credit cards that you can max them out and it won't hurt you like personal credit cards? Andre, it depends on how you got the credit cards. Business credit cards, you have them with what's called a PG or personal guarantor or personal guarantee. Everybody has their language on it. Um, it's going to affect your personal credit, yes, because you're, you're attached. You're basically a co-signer on it. Now, you can get business credit cards that are only attached to your business, but that's going to take a person five, six, seven months to build up that way they're able to even get business credit without a PG. The problem is people, most people who call me, they're not willing to wait that long. All they want is instant gratification. They want the right now. Nothing wrong with having some things right now, but for you to have it the proper way, it's going to take some patience. The Experian Boost is here. Yes, it is. And I mean to make a, I mean to make a video about that. Haven't done that yet. I'm sure people have already made 2,500 videos about that already. I'll probably make my own anyway. But, um, yep, Experian Boost is definitely in the building. Definitely can use that in order to... Uh, raise your score. Uh, fastest way it raises a score, uh, pay your dang on credit cards down. <laughs> uh, get those balances below 25% on each card. If that's too much, getting an AU with a high limit will lower your overall utilization. That is a fact. But don't forget that uh, per credit card is also important. When you do applications, your overall is great, but if you have a maxed out credit card on one of your one of your cards, that will affect you with getting new credit. So overall is great, but also lower all of them um, in their entirety the proper way. Uh, FCR book, you told me to get a few lives back. Is it the two book or the 240 why you were referring to? Um, let's see. And should I get the repossession book as well, or does the FCRA book cover it all? Uh, get the repossession book. I don't even have the repossession book, but get the Fair uh, Credit Reporting Act book and the Fair Debt Collection uh, book as well. What if I was to attempt to remove the inquiry? Should I put fraud alerts on? Um, you can. It doesn't hurt anything by putting a fraud alert on there. But keep in mind that a fraud alert can also have an adverse effect for certain people, certain accounts. You can put a fraud alert sometimes and certain credit bureaus, depending on how recent you've got that particular account, they'll remove certain accounts off your credit profile altogether, or they'll close an account for you that you didn't act to be closed. But they can look at your credit and say, oh, this person has a fraud alert, and they can go ahead and close an account. That has happened before as well. So that is another adverse effect that, that can happen. Okay. Oh, Yvonne, thank you, Miss Bo. Hope I pronounced it. Is it is it is it Uvanya or Vanya? Is it U silent? Uvanya. I hate to mess your name up. Please forgive me. Don't slap me. What credit bureaus does American Express pull your credit report from? Uh, Amex is going to pull mostly Experian. They do have certain cards though that you can get that might pull a different bureau, but usually nationwide, uh, Amex is going to use is going to pull Experian. Okay, uh, let's see. So what does our credit profile need to look like besides 
uh, one or two inquiries. So 100% payment history is ideal. Some people might have 99. Okay, you really can't help that until like those payments kind of go down or those uh, collections get removed or whatever, close the account. But you got to have 100% payment history. You need to have utilization be at a 9%. That's where you want it to be at. Forget the 30%, make it at a 9%. Uh, credit history, you want credit history to be nine years. Nine year credit history is average. Um, you want that to be your overall average. If you want excellent credit in that in that field, five years is good, but you want to be excellent, you'd be nine years. Total number of accounts, you're gonna need 20 accounts. 20 accounts in your whole lifetime of having credit. 20 accounts what you want to have okay uh let's see hi jay what broker do you use for forex thanks all right so i use two different brokers for my trading i use uh fx glory fxglory.com because they have uh a way for you to well the proper way to use it is to grow your account very fast um what I use that for is what I call my blow account. And so that blow account is basically what exactly what it means. I'm either going to blow this whole entire account or I'm going to triple part of my money within one or two trades. So I'll put 500 to $1,000 in that account and uh, you know I might make 5000 to 8000 from that money or I might lose the whole 500 to $1,000 in that account. Then I separate that and I have a separate account and I use uh, Trader's Way. Trader's Way is my other broker that I use. And I use that for my low risk account where I'm only risking 1% to 5% max. That's my ongoing, regularly trading, regular account that I'm using, as well as I'm able to feed my greedy side by investing in my blow account. But the blow account is money that I can lose every dime and it not affect me mentally whatsoever. So if I lost $500, Okay, lost five dollars. Put five dollars back in there. Do the next trade. Make four thousand dollars. Take a withdrawal. Withdraw it back to five hundred dollars. So I withdraw thirty five hundred. Put it in my account. Leave five hundred dollars in there. And I trade that again. Make eight thousand dollars. Withdraw seventy five hundred dollars. Put it in my account. Leave five dollars in there. Trade that again. I blow five hundred dollars. Five dollars in there again. I blow five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars again. I blow five hundred dollars. $5 again, I make 3000 and I do that same process with that blow account. At the same time, I have my main account, which is Trader's Way, and I'm growing that between a 1% and 5% every day that I'm trading that account. So whether it's, uh, you know, um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, whatever like that, if I'm trading that account every day that I'm actually trading that account, I'm also going to grow that account a 1% minimum, if not 5%. Um, every day. But to answer your question, those are the brokers I use. Um, I do have referral. I am a referring broker for a lot of companies as well for both of those companies. So I can send you a referral link and they will also give me a referral fee if you do want to get a broker with them. Um, hit me up, send me an email at inquiry or inquiry at jnosecredit.com and I'll send you the link and um, that way they can credit me for referring you to the company. Okay. <clears throat> But I am a referring broker for them. Uh, change your address on the Experian app and it will pull it through. So all closed accounts stay on your account uh, seven years. Yep, 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 yep. I have a PG business card that only show on business side. Wells Fargo, Navy Fed, AE, Blue All don't show on personal credit when you PG. I'm talking about if you default. LaDerek Brown. I'm not talking about if you uh, if you just paying on them regularly. I'm saying that if you default, if you go into negative on or you don't pay any of those credit cards, they will show up on your personal credit. I promise you that. Um, let's see. I have two closed accounts paid off car, two Capital One cards with no late payments. Um, Goodwill letter wrote, I want a high limit credit card, four to six K. No one will AU in my circle. I need a long history. All right, Mr. Baldwin Living, you definitely need to hit me up then. I'm 25, my oldest line is six years. That's what I'm talking about, man. 
Yeah. So we can get you some more history, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. No. Sorry about that. So negative or missed payment accounts stay on your credit profile seven years. Yep, sure do. Uh, which company is good to see all three credit reports? Uh, I'm going to say this because I'm, if you want to get a credit sweep, I would say Experian. <laughs> I use Experian. I like Experian. I like the way it's set up for me. Uh, credit check totals also owned by Experian. They're really good as well in the way they have their set up. But um you know, there's others out here. There's Privacy Guard. There's my FICO. I just don't deal with those other ones like that. I don't like the way they're set up. I don't like how often they update. They update way too long. Like, I think my FICO does every 90 days before you see a, a whole new three credit. Like, my bank does that. My bank gives me an update every three months. Like, why do I need to have my FICO and pay them $30 a month when I can just go to my bank and get my new score? Or I can have three different banks that pull three different or have three different records of credit scores and just use my bank to give me an update every three months, you know, for all three scores and not pay no monthly for that. Um, <laughs> Prophecy guard is trash. <laughs> Facts. That's a fact too. Uh, like that strategy, basically a conservative and aggressive strategy for different brokers. Absolutely. That's how you work it. Um, you know, you're able to feed both. So you don't feel like you're missing out on anything if you trade like that, because you're able to, Still have your conservative, moderate growth, and then have your aggressive, like, uh, you know, what I'm I want to put a 1.0 lot on this trade, but I can't because my main account only have this much money, and if I risk that much, I can't, you know, what I'm saying I end up losing more than I should be losing. So you can still say, okay, well, I got this account over here, I can just put whatever I want in that account, and if it goes, it goes. If it doesn't, keep moving. Andre Thomas, I have business credit cards. I did personal guarantee and I maxed them out, but haven't seen it affect my personal credit. Not only will they show up, they will F up your business credit way up more than your personal. They don't play with business derogatories. Absolutely not. Like I said, having a maxed out card doesn't mess anything up. It's when it goes into derogatory status. Having a maxed out card is not really derogatory. It's negative. It's, a, it's negative towards your credit as far as utilization. But it's not derogatory. Derogatory is like you had that account closed. You know, you have, you know, so many missed payments where it goes into a closed account status. And now it goes to collections. And now they look at, okay, there's a PG attached. Okay, now it goes to that personal, that person. Now there are PGs that will fall off and at a certain amount of time, but um, for a lot of people's businesses, they don't have that. But uh, thank you so much, Miss Bo. Um, for that, hopefully, uh, y'all enjoyed that. I want to, can I, uh, can I flip my account? Why can I, can I flip this, uh, camera over? Which I could. Is there a way to flip this camera around? That would be fantastic. All right. I think uh, everybody who's still watching right now, they're looking for that uh, some tax talk. Let's talk about. I'll, I'll give you a little bit. Just got proof from my Navy Federal checking account. Thanks for the info, Rodney. We got approval live, live on the channel, Navy Federal account. Yes, sir. When you're ready to get that uh, that credit card, let me know or. Even if you apply for it for yourself at some point because your credit's already good for it, uh, send us a screenshot when you get approved for your credit card. Just send us a screenshot saying, hey, Jay, appreciate it. You ain't got to say that. You ain't got to say nothing. Just send the actual screenshot of your approval. And, uh, you know, we just use that for advertisement. Say, hey, another person got another Navy Federal card, 10000 20000 you know. But uh, congratulations, man. Welcome. Welcome to a high limit credit card, checking line of credit, low uh, interest rate on credit, on uh, on car loans, low interest rates on houses. Okay. And that's just everybody. If you want to buy a house, I haven't seen nobody, nobody's, nobody's credit uh, rates as low as Navy Federal's. Like never. And I look for two years. So I haven't seen, if you, if you find somebody who has a lower rate, then, uh, 
Navy Federal, like, please let me know because I haven't found anybody lower than them. All right, so quick tax talk. Just I'm just going to talk about something real quick on some taxes. Those of y'all who don't care about taxes, don't worry. You don't got to care about this, but it'll save you some money. Uh, let's see here. IRS dot the government. IRS dot the government. Dot cummy. Uh, let's see if I can. Uh... IRS dot government. Publications. Don't worry, I'm coming. I'm pulling up for y'all. Where's the PDF at, man? That's supposed to be a PDF. Okay, there's a PDF. Sun's out, guns out. Is <laughs> there? I was just discharged from a chapter seven. How much would it be to get it deleted? I froze my Lexus Nexus already. Uh, it'll be eight hundred dollars to get it deleted. That's all you need to delete it, sir. Eight hundred bucks. All right. Mm-mm. Let's see what we can see here. Bop, 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 bop. Here's a story of a man named Jamar. Okay, okay. No, y'all can't see this very well. I will, uh, it's iris.gov website. I just pulled up over here so you can see it in the documentation. It is IRS, but let me zoom it. Let me zoom it back out so everybody can see it. Merge all tabs. Mm-hmm. Where'd it go? Okay, there it go. And there we go. Boom, 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 boom. Which is better, checking your savings with Navy? You need both. Just go ahead and get both. Put your $10 in there. Don't worry, I'm going to zoom in. Okay. Publication 463, irs.gov website. Find it. Jot it down. Okay. Travel, gift, and car expenses. Okay. And because I can't read this upside down, um, go ahead and go to my chapter. Oh, <clears throat> let me show you this real quick. Hopefully they still have it in here. And they didn't take it away. There we go. Okay. So right here is one big reason why I tell people that it's very important to have a business. Okay. That's why it's important to have a business, okay? This right here is your house, okay? That's your house. Now, it says if you go from your house and you go straight to your main job from home, you cannot deduct it in your taxes. All that mileage you did, some people drive an hour, 30 minutes, 30 miles to their from their job, I mean, from their home to their job, they can't write off on their taxes. Now, if you drive from your home and you stop at a temporary work location, which could be Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, you get you a coffee, you send an email, whatever, you hand out a business card, you stop at Walmart, whatever, then you go from that temporary work location, then you drive to work. It says always deductible. That means you can deduct that whole entire trip just because you made a stop and you did business. Now, if you go from home to your regular job, and you go to a second job, okay, you can deduct going to a second job in your taxes. So even if, like, a lot of people don't understand <laughs> taxes whatsoever. That's why I say, like, a lot of people's accountants are stupid. 
And they're like, no, nah, my accountant, man, I pay him a thousand dollars a month, bro. He tell me everything. Like, bro, he ain't tell you this. Shut up. Okay, so from your regular job to your second job that you got working 20 hours a week or some crap like that, you cannot write off on your taxes. Okay? And so that's just one thing. Let's look at this. This says gifts. That's gifts, right? All right. Zoom that in. It says you can deduct no more than $25 for business gifts you give directly or indirectly to each person during your tax year. A gift to a company that is intended for the eventual personal use or benefit of a particular person or a limited class of people will be considered an indirect gift to that particular person. And this is a little verbiage about how it's done. I'm not going to try to you know, give you all that extra talk, but that's your limit right there of how much you can give in business gifts. Let me find some more for you. There's more on this in this whole different thing here. I'm just giving you a couple of touches, touch and go. You can read the whole entire document yourself. I'm just going through some uh, extra things there. All right, here's another big thing people tell me all the time. All right, so for your car, people talk about their car expenses and all that, how they can write off all these things in their car. You can only do two things in your car. You can do the standard mileage rate or you can do the actual car expenses. Now, standard mileage, mileage is mileage. You can only do mileage or actual. You can't do both. You can calculate both. So which one is the higher one, take the bigger deduction, but you cannot do both of them and apply both of them to your taxes. If you do, that is illegal. If you get audited for that, then yeah, you're in trouble. You owe some back taxes. So uh, make sure if you calculate both, See which one is bigger. Now, for me, it's going to be actual. I'm sorry. It's going to be standard mileage rate. For most people, it's going to be standard mileage rate. For most. Not everybody. But if you're getting 50 cents per year, because it's going to change every year as far as what the rate is going to be. So if 50 cents, if you did 10,000 miles in driving that you can deduct, you can deduct $5,000 in your taxes. That lowers your taxable income. I drive a whole lot more than that. And so I might do 30,000 miles in my car, and that 30,000 miles, a $15,000 deduction, that's 15 grand that I don't pay no taxes on, but I have two cars. So that's $30,000 that I make in income that I pay no taxes on whatsoever. So I make it my business like I am driving to Disney World, not flying. I can fly, but what I'm going to get, what, $700, whatever deduction? When I can get 50 cents per mile driving there, driving around, driving back, I'm, I'm going to get the 50 cent. Okay? So that's that. My wife and my mama going off texting right now. Mother-in-law, they both going off. I ain't never get this many messages from them back and forth. I got to go back and read, read all those. <coughs> uh, here's another sexy one y'all can look at here. Uh, depreciation on your car. You can write off depreciation on your car. Good Lord, y'all. <laughs> They're going ham, I told you. Uh, but you can write the depreciation on your car. That's one big thing that people miss out on is depreciation. Your car does depreciate every year. Uh, so do a lot of your different things that you do that you that you actually own actually uh, depreciate. You can also write off any type of recording fees. You might pay somebody to do recording for you. As well as one of the big things here that I skipped over on purpose. I'm going to talk about that last. Oh, I might have forgot two things. Mm -mm. Oh, that's not the right one. I'm going to go to the one that actually gives it in full detail. Baby, turn around and let me see that sexy body go bum bum bum. Don't be hating. I mean, I like you know that song. That B2K tour coming. Mm-mm. All right. <clears throat> this is why I never eat by myself when I'm eating out. I always eat with other people. Okay. 
All right. E D D D. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. You can deduct meals as part of your entertainment for sleep away from your home. This is talking about, I think this is more on the travel side, I think. My apologies. This is travel meals. Okay, you can't deduct no lavish, extravagant meals. Okay, has to be reasonable based on the circumstances. But you got 50% limit on your meals you can write off. Okay, you can do the actual costs or the standard meal allowance to write off on your taxes. This is why a lot of times if I do eat out, I don't mind eating out, okay, because, you know, I can write off eating out. I can't write off groceries because they don't have a thing for that unless I'm buying them for a certain party, like party supplies and doing the party entertainment for it. But that is the only way that I can write that off, okay? This is just some crazy stuff, yo, like. Luxury water travel, like some of y'all going on cruises right now this year, you can write off your luxury water travel, like your travel on a cruise ship, all right? You can conduct some business while you're there. You can talk a little bit of business, pass out a business card. Now your whole trip is deductible. That's the rules. It's not a big thing uh, that people think is something like crazy that you can do, but um, you got a per diem. You have a per diem you can do. It is your highest per diem you can do on the water travel, $996. Okay, some of y'all, <laughs> some of these boat trips cost like $399, $400. Okay. All right. And then here is uh, one of these big things right here is uh, entertainment. All right. Entertainment includes any activity. Generally considered to provide entertainment, amusement, or recreation. Examples include entertaining guests at nightclubs, at social athletic sporting clubs, at theaters, on yachts, or on hunting, fishing, vacation, and similar trips. Okay. But um, you see that that you can do. So entertainment does in does include like going to the strip club. You know how these rappers and stuff and football players and stuff like that go to the strip club and spend money. They have no idea that all the cash that they're spending is a tax deduction that they can write off. They're just making it tsunami or whatever they call it nowadays in the club and don't know that tipping a stripper is actually part of your duty as an American for you to get some deductions. I'm just playing. But seriously though, like they could, you know, be tipping doing all that crazy stuff they're doing, spend all that money, and um, at least writing off from the taxes, you know? So it's not hard. They got documented proof they're in there throwing money. I mean, usually going to be on video. Somebody's recording them, so it's always proof they can write it off. Um, but you, you can just write yourself a receipt. Get the receipt. Write it to yourself. You can write off from your taxes. Okay? But it's just a couple of things here. Um, I said business gifts, deductions. Travel expenses, transportation, car expenses, mileage, all that. Publication 463. Read it. Study it yourself approved. Go look at it. Look at the deductions. They'll tell you what tax code it's supposed to be on. They'll tell you what other publications go with it in more detail and all of that. So, you know, uh, nothing wrong with just studying that, looking at certain publications on a website. Uh, look at those tax codes. All it is is just a tax code. Okay. Do you ever have any issues fixing disputes in and the line is always um, busy? Uh, Kia S. Booker. Yes, I'll send in some disputes in today and the line was busy. If the line does go busy a lot, don't be afraid. Just skip that skip that, and take your butt to the um, post office and mail it off. Spend that extra 4 or $5 you got to spend on that certified mailing and just send it off that way. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, always always be prepared to go to the post office. Uh, <laughs> you want to see it again? Uh, you send me a message. I'll send it to you again. I'll send it to you again. <laughs> Have you ever got one of those scam IRS calls? I've been getting them lately. This is the perfect time to get a scam call because it's tax time. So you're going to get a lot of that, you know, all the time. You'll get a lot of that. Uh, I'm not sure who was still watching at that point and even 
um, if you learn anything from it, if you got anything from it, you know. But uh, you definitely need to go to the IRS. A lot of people say, I don't want to mess with the IRS. Please go to the IRS.gov website so you can understand what they're doing. If you understand how these taxes work, you can work them to your advantage instead of being scared of people who work there. Like, oh, you're an IRS tax auditor. Oh, my God. Like, people hate you. Like, I don't, I don't have, I love auditors because I can back up everything I've ever done in business with records. So an auditor is just going to check my records and say, I did good. Most auditors will give me a hand clap because they're like, oh, man, you're the first person to come in my office who actually had a business card. Or you just first person came to my office who, you know, just had organization. A lot of folks don't have that. People be scrambling, going to their shoebox, pulling out receipts, talking about, here's my taxes, here's my records. That's not records, bro. Um, and getting back on here tonight, I want it back up. Um, I mean, you know, if you watched it before, I'll send it to you again if you watched it. You just, uh, it'll be private. I mean, it's going to stay unlisted, private. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to repost it. Just not going to do that, which I'll probably delete this one too. All right. So let me go through and answer all these text messages from my mother-in-law and my wife here and get back to this business wrap. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. It's always like two hours, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's your guy Jay knows credit. Hopefully I kind of made up something for yesterday. And uh, for those of y'all who need my services, hit me up. Um, those of you who, you know, are fixing credit yourself, um, definitely Godspeed. Much luck to you. Don't be afraid to. Um, Battle anything you get back, anything that comes back that says it's verified, or whatever. Make sure you come back with a rebuttal on that. Let's see if a person hasn't filed in X amount of years and you find out the company was cooking the books. <laughs> uh, what is the definition of cooking the books? You mean like uh, falsifying the information as far as uh, putting in more stuff that wasn't there? Uh, yeah, if they've been cooking the books in that way. Uh yeah, they're gonna owe a lot of money. Yeah, they going they're gonna be yeah, they need to, you know, resubmit their well if yeah, they're gonna be in trouble. Uh hopefully, you know, and the good thing is if the person does have an accountant, it's gonna be somewhat to fall back on the accountant as far as on the legal side. Now, if they're cooking the books themselves and not the accountant cooking the books, then yeah, they're gonna be in a lot of trouble with fees and everything like that. Um so the reprimanding will be severe. It's better if they admit to it themselves and do it. Do the employees still owe? What do you mean employees still owe what? Why would the employees owe when the businesses who cook the books up? Are you talking about maybe they pay somebody who was not legal? And maybe that person didn't file their taxes. In that case, yes, the employee will be in trouble. If the employee didn't file what they made in income. But uh, other than that, no. But yeah, let me get back to this. My assistant called me right now. Let me get back to work and uh, talk to you all later, okay? Jay knows credit out. <laughs>